Today we're going to talk about Joan of Arc. Yes, I'm pretty sure you have these pictures inside of your mind. A knight in the shining armor riding a white horse, saving for the damsel. But how about the damsel in the shining armor riding a white horse, rescuing the kingdom. So this is the story about Joan of Arc. But before we start, here's the background. At this moment, towards the end of the 100 years war, England and also his French ally, the Burgundy, controlled two-thirds of the land in France. The, the remaining one-third of the France is still being controlled by someone by the name of Charles Dauphin, which is later he will be crowned as the Charles VII. Now, Charles Dauphin, he was an exile because simply he's not officially become the king yet because he was not being crowned yet. He was not being coronated. Simply because the traditional city, the traditional cathedral that where the French king or the French monarchy usually being crowned was being captured by the English. So basically, you can say that you know he cannot become the king simply because the city was being occupied by the enemy. This condition happens because it has something to do with the Battle of Agincourt. If you remember about the Battle of Agincourt, King Henry V of England won the battle, and because of that one, he had a special he has a special arrangement with the French king at that time, King Charles VI, or to be known as the the Mad King. In that agreement that King Henry will become like the co-ruler of the French together with King Charles VI. And not just that one, King Charles VI also gave his daughter as a wife for King Henry V of England. So therefore, if King Henry and the daughter of King Charles VI had a son, the, the son will become the future of French king at the same time will become the future English king. Unfortunately, history hates simplicity. King Charles VI, the Mad, he died. Well, that means King Henry V should become the French king. He too, King Henry, he died at a young age, not long after the Mad King died. So therefore, the French king should be the son of King Henry V, which is someone by the name of King Henry VI. Well, not that simple because like, King Henry VI at that time was still a little boy. He could not become the king. And then to cut the story short, there was a civil war in French at that time. Those who support the idea that King Henry VI should become the king of England and also the king of French and those who do not like that idea. And those who do not like that idea, they prefer to pick Charles Dauphin, which is at this moment, Charles Dauphin and his followers were only just like one third of the French because the remaining, the rest of the two thirds of the land were being conquered, were being controlled by the England and also were being controlled by the England and also the Burgundy. The morale was low, the French troops, they no longer have a hope they can win this war. They no longer have the enthusiasm to go to the battle anymore. And then also the villagers and also the people, they got tired with this war because the English and also the Burgundians, oftentimes they will raiding their city and they will raiding their village. They will practicing a strategy known as the Chevauche, which is basically burning down villages and also towns as much as they could with the hope that it will destroy the economy of that land. Now, Joan of Arc, she was born in a simple farming village by the name of Dombremy, somewhere in France. There's nothing fancy about this village. Joan grew up as a peasant girl. She didn't know how to read and write just like everybody else at the time. Oftentimes, she witnessed how brutal the English troops raiding their village. One day when she was 16 years old, she received this kind of like a strange vision, a supernatural being. She met the Archangel Michael, the Saint Margaret, and also Saint Catherine. Now, these three angelic beings, these three supernatural beings kind of like told her, give her a mission, a mission that is almost impossible for a peasant girl to accomplish. Yes, the peasant girl on a mission. So the mission was two things. Joan was being told by the Archangel Michael with two things. The first one is to liberate the city of Orleans. Now Orleans is a one of the important city in France because geographically it's a very strategic place. Whoever controls it will control the rest of the remaining of the southern France. The second mission was Charles Dauphin must be crowned in the city of Reims. Now Again, as I said earlier, this is like impossible mission. This is almost impossible mission a, that a peasant girl must carry. Anyway, the strength of Joan was this thing. 
she has a faith and then she has a conviction and she was very serious about it she, she started to tell everyone about the vision that she received of course at first many people do not believe in her but because of her conviction and her faith everybody start to believe in her and they accompany her and finally they send her to Charles Dauphin now meeting up with Dauphin also is not an easy task itself because Joanne had to travel very far for a peasant girls you will not travel more than three villages away from your place because it's just considered to be dangerous for a girl to travel too far her neighbors must dress her up as a man she wear a she wear a soldier clothes and after that they cut her hair and they kind of like you know so they dress her up as a man so she will not going to be harassed or being stopped by the bandits and also including that joanne have to travel through the english controlled territory just all the way to talk to Charles Dauphin about this vision. When Charles Dauphin met Joanne for the very first time, he was not convinced. He was not even convinced with Joanne's mission and also Joanne's vision. But then later on, Dauphin believed in her. He gave Joanne a set of a battle armor, a horse, a banner, and a group of troops. Yes, Joanne, 16 years old peasant girls were being entrusted with those small group of troops. And then Dauphin gave a mission for Joanne to relieve the siege in the city of Orleans. Because at this moment, the city of Orleans, they were being surrounded. They were being under siege by the English and also the Burgundians. So this mission itself is almost kind of like impossible. She humbly accepts this task without any complaint. So, and then off she go to Orleans with the small group of the troops. Now, for the Dauphin though, Dauphin, the reason like why Dauphin trusted Joanne, it was not that innocent. Now, Dauphin here is very sneaky. He was thinking like this. Well, let's just give it a try for this peasant girl to try to accomplish this task. If Joanne succeed, that means God is upon her. Because God is upon her, God is upon us also. Awesome. I will receive likes and supports from my followers because somehow Because God is with me through Joanne because Joanne is a blessed because Joanne is being blessed and also being protected by God But let's just say Joanne failed and know she was being killed Well, I can always wash my hand and then Telling everyone including the English and also the Burgundy that I have nothing to do involved with Joanne Okay, she was just a mad girl she was just crazy and I have nothing to do with her. So, see, it's a win-win solution for me, according to Dauphin. Now, Joanne surprisingly liberated the city of Orleans from the siege. It was a tough battle, but Joanne, she did not shy away from the violence and also the battlefield, the carnage of the battlefield. Instead of like shying away by standing behind the ranks of the troops, Joanne lead the charge over and over again. This 16 years old peasant girl she lead the charge. She was in front of the lines. And it, so many times, it awakens the hope and also the courage of the French troops, which is at this moment, they thought that they are losers. And they are charging against the enemy because they got inspired by Joanne's bravery. Yes, there was a time like Joanne got shot by an arrow. Everybody thought that she died, but actually, yes, she survived the wound. By the end of this battle, the city of Orleans was being liberated and Joanne was being celebrated as a hero, as a heroine, which is, that will become her title from now on, the Maid of Orleans. After the victory of the French in Orleans, then it became like the turning point for the French and also the turning point for the England and also the Burgundy. So because at this moment, the French, they start winning battles after battles, city after city was being controlled by the French, city after city was being liberated by the French, and ultimately the city of Rheim itself and with the liberation of the city of Rheims finally Charles Dauphin he was being crowned or coronated in that city to be exact in the cathedrals of Rheims the ceremony itself it was a big ceremony it was a very kind of like joyful ceremony it was being attended by the nobles and also the supporters of the French it was being attended also by the Charles Dauphin supporters but now at this moment Charles Dauphin officially he became the French king by claiming himself as Charles the seventh. She's standing quite apart. Now after all the ceremony was done, Joan asking to Dauphin to let her to go back home to her hometown, Domremy, because her mission was done. 
liberating the city of Orleans, and also to make sure Charles Dauphin was being crowned or coronated in the city of France. Job's done! Well, not so according to Dauphin. Dauphin refused to let go Joanne to go back home to her hometown. In fact, Dauphin gave another mission. Dauphin gave another impossible mission for her. This time, the mission was to lead the French army to liberate the remaining cities of France which is being controlled by the Burgundy and also by the England. Now, one of them is the city of Paris. Well, Joanne, she could not complain about it, so she obeyed her king and then off she go to Paris. But in one of the battle, she was being captured by the enemy. She was being captured by the Burgundians. Now, before Joanne was being assigned, actually Dauphin promised something to Joanne. Dauphin promised that Dauphin and the rest of the French troops will come to give assistance and also aid to Joanne's army to take over the city of Paris. But Dauphin never arrived with his troops. Dauphin made a false promise to Joanne. Joanne was abandoned. As she was being captured by the Burgundy, of course, the Burgundy, they still practice this what we call the chivalry code by offering to Dauphin a chance to liberate, a chance to pay the ransom for Joanne's liberation. That's it how it works. Kept someone as a hostage until the ransom is being paid. Now, Dauphin refused to pay the ransom. Dauphin will Dauphin refused to pay the ransom. He would rather to let Joanne to die in prison. He couldn't care less anymore with Joanne because he got what he want. He got what he need. He was the king now and he got a huge territory already. And then now he was in the process of making a peace treaty with the England and also with the Burgundy. So if he paid the ransom for Joanne's liberation, it will damage the process of the peace treaty with the England. So Dauphin, he was being shrewd, decided to abandon Joanne. So the Burgundy at this moment, they sold Joanne to the English. They are more than happy to receive Joanne because why? They want to put Joanne in a trial and then after that sentence her to death. Yes, Joanne must die according to the English court at the time. So Joanne was being sent into the Inquisition trial. This trial will be unfair for her. Whatever she said, whatever her answer, she will be guilty. In this trial, Joanne was being bombarded with a lot of like difficult questions. These are the tricky questions that you know re that forcing Joanne to confess something that she will regret and then give enough reasons for the court to sentence her to die as a heretics or as a witch. Because it was considered to be a blasphemy at that time to claim to receive a vision from God or from an archangel or from any kind of like saints. So therefore, that is the point that that is the point like this English court they tried to they tried to attack Joanne. Again, it was a series of a tricky questions. One of the tricky questions goes like this. Joanne, do you know that you are in God's grace? Now what is wrong with that question? Here's the thing. If Joanne answered yes, she will be in trouble. Because why? At that time, because why? Because that means she claims no better than God. Now I know this is a bit kind of complicated. During that time, the, the church teaching says that nobody knows except God whether you are in God's grace or not. Only God knows that you are in God's grace or not. So if Joanne claimed that I know, I know I'm within God's grace, the inquisitor will accuse her, aha, you are blaspheming against God because you claim that you know better than God. So therefore, you are considered to be guilty, something like that. But if Joanne says, no, I'm not. I'm not in God's grace. That means it's also it's also a trouble. If Joanne answered that, that means Joanne admit that she was not in God's grace. That means she is a sinner. She commit a heresy by claiming that she was guilty and then she was in she was not in God's grace. And as a punishment, then yeah, Joanne must be put to death also because she is guilty. Yeah, those kind of like tricky questions. But again, here's the great things about Joanne. Even though Joanne was illiterate, doesn't know how to read and write, it does not make her dumb. Joanne of Art, she answered wisely like this. If I am in God's grace, may he kept me stay in there. But if I am not in God's grace, may he put me in there. And that moment, everybody was shocked with the answer and everybody was speechless. And they were like, 
Okay, they were just like, uh, 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 mm, and well, you know what? If I were joined at the time, that was the right moment for me to drop my microphone like that, you know? So, because nobody can answer it. I mean, nobody can respond. Nobody know how to respond. And they realize that it's not easy to trick Joanne into guilty. So they getting frustrated. They getting desperate to find any kind of fault on Joanne. So finally, one night, as Joanne was being kept in the prison. Now, Joanne at this moment, of course, because she is a female, she wear kind of like, you know, she wear the kind of like, you know, female dress, right? Oh, by the way, there was a time that Joanne tried to escape from her prisons by jumping from the tower to the moat below. And miraculously, she survived. Well, yeah, she got a bad, terrible ankle, but then again, she's fine. Amazing. Now, by the way, go back to that story. Now, one night, Joanne's clothes was being stripped off, and then she was being given a male cloth in returns. Now, of course, it's a very traumatic moment for her. Now, the option is only two things. Either she wear that male clothes, or she's being naked inside of the prison. Now, it's very obvious. She wear that male clothing, and not just that one. The guards cut her hair short, like a man. And then the next morning, when the church officials discover that Joanne's wearing a male clothing, and also having a short hair like a man, they accuse Joanne that Joanne is a witch. They cannot sentence her to death as a heresy. So therefore, they accuse her as a witch because she wear she wore a male clothing. Okay, time out. At this moment, you're probably thinking like, what is wrong wearing kind of like pants, slacks, and kind of shirt that dressed up like a man? Well, maybe in the 21st century, there's nothing wrong with that for the girls. But during the 14th century, it's considered to be embarrassing, taboo, and also a sin. It's just as ridiculous that you go to school with bathing suit. And so, they got Joanne, and Joanne must sign this contract. Joanne must sign this kind of like document saying that she confessed that the vision that she received back in Dom Remy, it was a lie. It was not true. It was not real. It was not from God. She signed it. Now, because she signed it, now the court being merciful for her, instead of like, you know, send her to death, they sent her to prison for the rest of her life. So she will die in prison until she gets old. But that night, according to the story, Joanne was being visited by St. Catherine in a vision. Now, St. Catherine was not happy with Joanne's decision of like signing that document. And then the next morning, she frantically, she screamed and then she denied that she regret signing the document saying that the vision that she received back in Dom Rami was a false. She ripped off the paper, she ripped off the documents. Now because of that one, therefore, the court, the church officials, they were somehow, there's no other way around. And Joanne must be put to death as a witch, which is tied on a pole and then set it on fire. It was a very horrible way to die as a witch. So Joanne was being tied into a pole and she was being burned. And the last wish that she had before she died, she asked the local priest to raise up the cross as close as to her face so she can see the cross while she was being burned alive. So Joanne was being burned twice, and after that, the ashes was being scattered around into the nearby river. So that is the end of the life of Joanne. The trial and also the life story of Joanne leave a huge amount of record and also details it even has more details compared to the other kings at the time so it's an interesting story especially about the details about her trials now 20 years later many things has changed the french king dauphin which is charles the seven finally he liberated the city of paris and after that 20 years later he declared that joanne that joanne is a hero and after that and also the church decided to not to record Joanne as a witch, but Joanne as a saint. So that's why she received the title, Saint Joanne of Art, the Maid of Orleans. Joanne become like the symbol of nationalism in French. The French people become kind of like more united. Now they are fully aware that they are one nation. And then they're unified as a nation, as the French nations. So there you go. That is the story about Joanne of Art. Tell me what do you think about Joan of Arc. Until next time, I see you guys. Bye-bye. God bless you guys all. Thank you for watching.